Okay, welcome to Design Experts BC Masterclass. My name's Tim Gentle, and I'll be bringing this topic today, which is advanced settings and the BC community. So we're really digging in deep yet again, going into the back of BC and, and unraveling some of those advanced settings. And then we'll have a little look at the Business Catalyst community. So it's a great topic. Great to see uh, so many people in the room today. And uh, thank you for those that have joined me from the start. I think there's about seven to this series and it's good to see some familiar faces in the room. Okay, some housekeeping. We've got Erin Jennings in the house. She's one of our key marketing people here and also an account manager. Uh, Erin, uh, feel free to jump in and give us an audio check, but you can ask Erin uh, plenty of questions in the chat room. Simply raise your hand and Erin will bring you in the room. And I believe there's a question tab, is that correct, Erin? Certainly is. So if you've got any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to just drop the questions um, into there and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, feel free to throw some curly ones at me. I'm ready for it today. So if you've got anything that you want to know about BC, just uh, make sure you let us know. Excellent. Thanks, Erin. All right. Uh, we always like to have a Q&A at the end. Uh, so those people that don't feel comfortable in joining the room during the webinar, we do encourage you to do that. But if you don't, we can uh, stop the recording at the end and feel free to ask questions. But uh, yeah, if you cut, something comes up along the way, by all means, Erin will read the question and, and answer it. So what are we going to learn today? So we're going to learn a little bit about BC. Uh, there are some people in the room that potentially don't have a business catalyst website. So we'll have a quick chat about that. And then we're going to be talking about importing your customers. Ooh. And then after that, we're going to import products. Oh, getting deeper. Then we're going to talk about search engine optimization. This is about getting your website found in Google. What can BC offer? We're going to be talking about secure zones. That's that member restricted area of your site. So what is it and, uh, and, and, and what are the functionalities? And then we're going to be talking about user roles and setting up email accounts. We're going to be talking about what I like. It's one of the things that seems to get missed a lot. It's called categories and that's, uh, that's under the hood. I'll show you that later. And we're going to talk about workflow or workflows. What happens when someone does something on your site? How can you control that? So it's pretty exciting. Um, and after that, we're going to be having a look at the BC community. I always like to end off with tips and tricks. I've got a couple of gems today, so I'll uh, end the uh, webinar today with some tips and tricks. And then how do you get support moving forward working with design experts? So I'll send you down the, the right path and show you how to get some more support. So that's what you're going to learn today. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get straight into it. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to move my Meerkat stream. There we go. You can join us over there, Mr. Meerkat. No, oh, but I don't want to. I want to do that way. Well, that's what you, that's where you're going. Okay. All right, the benefits of Business Catalyst. Well, it's an all-in-one solution. Okay, so when you use this solution, it's an online solution. It's got e-commerce, email marketing. You can update your website. You can have a blog. You can do a whole lot of things. It gives you control, so you're not always going back to your web developer or design experts and saying, can you please update my menu? It allows you to, uh, or it grows as your business grows. So you can start off small and you can work your way up the ladder. It's quite easy to use. Okay, so you're getting a bit of training today and obviously that's one of the things we hang our hats on. But it's actually quite easy to use once you know how. And it's updated regularly by Adobe. So Business Catalyst is owned by Adobe and design experts almost skin, uh, put, a, put a website interface on the front of this solution. It's hosted in secure data centers around the globe. Uh, yours, if you're based in Australia, will be in Sydney. Great little data center there, but um, yeah, also over in Europe and over in North America. And you can be part of the community. So BC, you're not sort of isolated. You can reach out and there's lots of people around the world using it. 
All right, it's time to do the business catalyst demo. So without further ado, let's jump behind the scenes. Okay, I'm on timgentle.com. And as you know, this is, I guess, uh, almost my private site in one respect. I use it for my workshops and uh, some keynotes. And I've had that since, uh, since the internet was born, really. It's evolved over time. And I use Business Catalyst, so I've logged in. So I've just gone to slash admin, okay? And I've logged in to my control panel. So let's go to the dashboard so we know where we're starting. So here I am at the dashboard of my Business Catalyst solution. Uh, over the last, well, I guess, two months or so, in the last seven workshops, six workshops, we've covered all of this. We're going to be going back into a few of these but we're going to be covering a lot down in here. Ooh, site settings. All right, I know there's a few of you in the room that want to know about importing customers. Starting right at the top, your CRM, Customer Relationship Management Tool, if you click on Search or Customers, what it does is it brings you to, sorry, you click on Customers. So when you click on Customers, it lists all of the customers that are in your business catalyst solution, okay? So you've got to remember, design uh, timgentle.com isn't really used to its full potential. I've got other websites uh, that I use in relation to the CRM. So what we need to do is understand this. Your customers sit in a database. And another way to describe the database is that they sit in an Excel spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to import customers via an Excel spreadsheet. So you click on this tab at the top and then it gives you the template to download. So I'm going to download the import template. So I'm going to pull this off the net. It's ready there. I'm going to click on it. And then what this is, is it's an Excel spreadsheet that has all of the columns that you need to address when importing your customers. So rather than read all the finite detail today, I'm going to remove that. So I just have to enable editing. And then I'll just remove this. I'll zoom in so you can see it a bit better. So don't stress everybody. Okay. And what you can see here is a column. Column A, column B, column C. And then running along row one is what's called column headings. And you'll see here your ID, email, title, full name, first name. And look, it goes on and on and on and on and on. These are all the information that you can have on your customers. In fact, if you work more closely with BC, you can grow it again and you can have extra columns. But we'll work with the default module today and I'll just give you some really basic tips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in another person. Now you can choose any number here. They give you a number if you don't identify it. So I'll just go 007. It might already be in there. So just in case, I'll just um, I'll just do a random number. I'll just go 0010. That'll do. Don't really normally touch this. I guess if you're a library or a membership card or something like that, if you had a unique ID, you could use that. Okay, let's whack in a email address. I'll just quickly do one. I've got a spare one that I use occasionally. Um, actually, that one's already been used. I've got a new one coming through now. So think.digital. Okay, so Tim at think.digital. Um, I'm a mister. I'm a Tim. And my last name is Gentle. Now, you could imagine, all right, you can import this uh, from Outlook. You can get your staff to populate it. You can sit there and type it from your business cards. But literally, you have to work your way along. If you leave it empty, that's fine. Um, if you populate it, that's fine. You know, you've got to literally go through the motions of populating all of these. Okay. So what you need to understand is that you can be as thorough or as thin as you need to be. One thing I really like and a tip for today is these four cells. In fact, I quite like these three in particular. What does this mean? This is known as customer type. So I could be a supplier, a customer, a contractor, and you can give people a different a segment, uh, a category that you can uh, uh, 
form lists and, and, and classifications around. Uh, where did I find out about us? You know, I found you at an expo. And what industry I am in? I'm in um, uh, digital. And so you can create your own industries here. Rating, you know, how cool am I? Cool, hot, or, uh, or, or cold? Uh, or uh, you can use anything in terms of rating, gold, silver, bronze, doesn't really matter. Today, I feel pretty hot. Um, so that's it. I don't want to go into any more detail. Just imagine that could be 5,000 rows. But here's the trick. When you go into File, you need to click Save As. When you click Save As, you must choose the file type, comma, separated, or comma, delimited known as a CSV, okay? So I'm gonna select that now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this to my desktop, okay? And I'm gonna give it a name. It's known here, if it's very hard to read, I assume, but I'm just gonna call this TGTV import file. And you know what I do? I always put the date. So I do 2503.15 for today's date. TGTV import file file, save. It's a comma separated volume or a comma delimited save. Yes, I realize and yes. I'm going to go back now to my website and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import it. All right, so I'm going to choose the file. It's located on my desktop. Scroll down and I'm going to grab this. I'm going to click open and then I'm just going to click comma delimited all right you can have a tab delimited as well but i've chosen comma first row contains column headings yes and i want to update the details these are all the details it's going to import at which time i can import them but at the same time if i felt like it i could subscribe them to my e-news i could subscribe them to my member only area so not only am I importing this Excel spreadsheet, not only am I classifying and categorizing these people, but I'm also adding them to my e-news and I'm also um, subscribing them to my members only area. So what I'll do now is I'll click next and then okay. What this will do is it'll import it and give you a bit of a snapshot saying, hey, is this right? Just have a little look and I scroll across and get a bit of a feel for it. If you've got 50 or 1,000, it'll show you the first 10 or so. And then I'm gonna click Import. So what this has done is it's stripped the Excel spreadsheet, the CSV, and it's populated my CRM, my Customer Relationship Management Tool. So now if I do a search on Sony, um, this will bring up Sony Inc. I noticed there that that was a company name. And so that's imported. I mean, I kind of went a little backwards way here, but I can come into relationships now and I can find the staff, which was John Citizen. Let me just scroll in there. I'm moving pretty quickly today, people, but you can watch the recording. And John Citizen was part of the Excel spreadsheet. Let's have a look. There he is, John Citizen, Sony Inc. And there's his phone number. So if we go back now and have a little look at John's port, um, profile, we can go in, we can have a look at his phone number, his web address, and so forth. All right, so you can import John again. Just say, for example, that he had a change of phone number or a change of fax number. You could literally just update the Excel spreadsheet. Say, for example, um, uh, his phone number changed and became 1385 you could do that. Whoops, sorry. You could go File. Come on, you can do it. File, Save As. I'm going to call this Import File V2. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm actually just creating a new one. You know, I've just updated John's phone number. All right. So I'm going to import that again. I'm going to be importing that into the, into the same... Spreadsheet, so let's do that again. If you remember, we went to Customers, we went to Import Advanced, we locate the spreadsheet, which is now sitting on our desktop. Here it is, V2. It's a comma delimited. All right, it's a comma delimited. 
and I'm now going to re-import that spreadsheet. Again, I don't really need to do this again. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm clicking Next. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import it. You'll note here in the preview, it has got his new number. Okay, so you can quickly check that out. But when you're importing it, that'll update his instant. It's known as an instant in the customer database. Let's go and search on John this time rather than Sony. Where are you, John? Jeez, what was his last name? Citizen, wasn't it? Mr. John Citizen, okay. What's your phone number? 1300 85 25 82. In fact, that's our phone number. Hey, John, are you working for us? So that's customer importing, all right? Pretty exciting stuff, very powerful to know that you can run your customer database via a CSV. All right, any questions there, Erin? That's a big milestone to, to, to get over. I'm gonna move on to products now, but just wanted to pull up the horse in case I'm galloping too fast. No, that's good, no questions at the moment. So it's all sinking in. Oh, sorry, one quick question. Can you export as well? Great question. Yes, you can. The easiest way to export is to go into reports. Actually, I think there's another way too. Let's firstly try this. Customers. And then you go export a report. All right, so export a report. Now, I think what you need to do, if you want to export everybody, you need to filter it by all. Okay, and you can do a few little bits and pieces here if you want to, you know, export only those in the digital space, um, apply, and that would obviously just bring up uh, those two. Alrighty, uh, and so export Excel. The other way that I like to do it is I like to come down into reports. I like to go to custom reports, and I like to create a report. So add a customer report. I want to export or create a report for companies or customers, you know, whatever you want to do. I'll just do customers and contacts. Next. From there, I want to get uh, their first name, customer name. Um, I want to get their uh, industry. I'd like to get their cell and their email. And so you can choose different fields here. Next. From here, you can filter it. So filter by industry equals digital if you felt like it, okay? Or you can just leave that blank if you want everybody. All right. Generate report. And you'll see here that it's exported uh, the two people. Obviously, a design expert is the company, Tim Gentle, the person. And I can then go next. I can actually save that, which is kind of cool. So you can call this uh, digital uh, industry customers. So I've always got that report now. I've always got that at my beck and call. And if I want to, I can um, go to results and I can export it in this environment as well. So everyone, I am recording the webinar. You can go back, pause, play, pause, play. I'm just showing you the possibilities today. We've got a lot to cover. But you've seen there that I've created a custom report. I can now export that as an Excel spreadsheet. I love this one too. Add contacts, add customers to a campaign list. So let's, you know, let's get our thousand customers. Let's generate some reports and segment them. And then let's form email marketing lists to send out, you know, bulk emails to these uh, specific types of segmented customers. Very powerful stuff and, uh, and something to be aware of. Alrighty. This might sound a little crazy, Aaron, but um, could, I, could I trouble you for a glass of water? Um, or if you could ask uh, someone to bring one in. I appreciate that. Sorry to do that too. All right, I'm moving. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move on to products now. Okay, products are a little bit more complicated. Again, very powerful stuff. I'm not going to, I've covered e-commerce in depth. Uh, I think it was last week when I covered uh, this particular tab. But importing products is something that you need to be aware of. And you'll see here, I've just clicked on products and then I've moved up to import products. 
I'm going to be repeating almost a similar step to importing customers because what you need to know is when you download the template, this is also an Excel spreadsheet. You can also export a product list and start working with that. But I must admit, the easiest and best way is to have the product download, and I've done that right now. Thank you. And I'm now bringing up the Excel spreadsheet. Again, I'll enable editing. There's a few sheets here. I'm just going to go to sheet. Um, let me have a look at one that might be good. Let's have a look at five, six. I'll go with six. I'm just going to resize it here. I'm going to get rid of all that text and I'm going to enlarge it so you can see it. Okay, we're talking now importing products. So we've got to go back to basics. You're importing products into a database. A database in one respect is a set of tables. A set of tables in one respect is an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm working in Excel now and I'm going to be populating tables to import into the database, which becomes my shopping cart on my website. So, you know, if I go TGTV, this is the name of one of my products. That could be a barcode, a product code, it could be anything. This is the name of the product. So this is going to be an orange TV. The description is a retro orange, whoops, retro orange funky TV. Uh, I haven't got a, an image. Uh, probably should have uh, thought of that one uh, prior, but what I'll do is I'm going to do a little sneaky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my website here and I'm going to go to one of my products. I've got a product sitting in here. It's an orange funky chair. I'm going to quickly grab the URL. This is the image reference here. So I'm just going to grab that for the purpose of the demo. Jumping back into Excel, I'm going to be pasting that now and pasting that now. So what I'm doing here is just populating a row, moving my way along. Look, it's asking me here for a catalog. This is a filing system, okay? A filing system. So do I wanna put it under shoes men or let me jump into the back of the website again and get a catalog. I'll quickly click, click on my catalogs and see what I've got. I've got one called e-commerce and I've got another one called orange items. E-commerce, orange items. Be nice if I could copy that, but it doesn't actually give you that. It's kind of annoying that part. So what I'll do here is I'll go back. I can copy the one above, but I remember it. I think it was orange, come on, orange items. Gotta get this perfect, which is a bit weird. And actually, I've gotta go one more. I've gotta put one before that. I think um, when they set it up, they had e-commerce, so e-e-commerce. All right, that's getting a little technical today, but at the end of the day, I'm just setting it up and filing this product away, okay? Uh, when you download your product list, it gives you those, okay? So you can try and make them up and remember them. I'll just double check that to see if I'm on the right track. Orange items and e-commerce. Yep, that looks pretty good. I don't think it matters about lowercase and uppercase. Okay, I'm gonna give it a price. I'm just gonna price this in AU dollars. This is, uh, I'm gonna make this uh, 380. It's a good price. And I can move my way along, okay? There's a lot of stuff here, all right? Everything from, you know, what, how, how much it weighs, is it in stock? Uh, custom one, custom two. These are great for like manuals and PDF downloads and YouTube videos and all sorts of things. You can have your poplets, which is extra photos. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Attributes, you know, does it come in blue, green and yellow, small, medium, large? Pretty exciting when you get to that. You can have nice little drop downs and radio boxes and look, it just keeps going. It just doesn't stop. And so these are all the information that you can import for products. For the purpose of the demonstration, that will do. File, save as. Don't forget that. File, save as. Give it a date, okay? So I always give it a date. 2503.15. Call it something, TG TV. 
And uh, there you go. I'm going to put that onto my desktop so I can find it easy. And I've now created... Ooh, did I create... I don't feel like I did. File, save as. Mm. So you've got to pick up on me on that. Always jump in. You need to save it as a CSV. I was moving quickly there. So the file type that I'm saving this Excel spreadsheet must be a .csv. Um, and I'm going to be doing that now. Now I feel better. I'm going to jump back into the website now and I'm going to click on products. So I'm going to be taking the CSV and I'm going to be importing it. Okay? It asks me, have I, you know, um, have I downloaded the import spreadsheet? Well, yes, I have. It's on my desktop. So I'm going to go get that. Scroll down, find it. Where are you? See the difference? You can see the difference of the icons here. CSV, Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to choose the CSV, of course. Click on comma delimited. Scroll down. Leave this ticked because the first column or the first um, row is headings. I can even delete. That's pretty cool. You know, I want to remove, clean the database up, or I want to add and update items. The product code, that's the unique identifier, or um, I think it's known as the primary key for some of you database geeks in the room. All right, you probably wouldn't even be in the room because you know this stuff. Okay, click next, and I'm going to be sucking up an CSV, and I'm given here a, um, a, a, a preview. Uh, there we are, the orange TV and a little bit of information. All right. I'm going to click on import now. I've imported it and now I can click on products and I should have the uh, orange TV as part of my product list. So pretty exciting. Excel spreadsheet, you can manage your entire product database, you can update prices, you can update supplier codes, you can update descriptions, uh, whatever you want to do, and then you can import it. Be so, so careful though. Um, you know, it, it can cause damage if you haven't had proper training. So if you do feel a bit nervous, uh, yeah, just, uh, just give us a call and we can help you out for the first few just to get you across the line. Um, I can have a look at that probably. I can't remember what the web address is. I think it's Tim Gentle slash e-commerce. No, come on, what was it? I did it last week. Um, no, I can't remember. I actually have a page. Let me see if I can find it. BC class, BC demo, no. Mm, what are you? Chairs, I think that was it. That was it there, I saw it. Jeez. Is that it? This will get me there anyway. Maybe if I just go e-commerce. Let's see what that does. Alright, I'm just um, playing around here on the fly. I'm going to click on orange items and I should have two. I should have a funky chair and I should have a funky orange TV. No, what have I done? What have I done? Can't think, can't think on the fly. Um, I've just done some sort of category management wrong. Apologize for that, but you get the general drift. Um, there would have been something very small, something like it's not enabled. Today, not gonna dig in deep. That's the general sort of overview of how that works. So I've imported um, products. Um, the product is there. I can go in and work with that further. Okay, so I can go in and update it. Um, I can reclassify it. Maybe I got the, the catalogs wrong. I'm in orange items. Why aren't you showing? Maybe it's because this one, I think it's that. All right, I might have done a slight mistake with my classifications. Jeez, I think I know what it is. It was the small E and the big E. Small E and big E. That's just off the charts when it does stuff like that. So I should be able to click refresh now. And there you go. So it's brought in the orange TV and it's uh, $380. And I can click on that and I can go in and you know, you get the idea that would normally be a picture of a, a TV and you've now imported that 
and you're off and racing. So yeah, geez, it's amazing how precise you have to be, isn't it, for the catalogs. All right, well, that's product importing, Erin. Um, that's a pretty big topic. I know a few in the room are here to see that. Again, they can have some more advanced training if they give us a call. All right, we're going to be talking now about search engine optimization. What can you do in your BC uh, website to help it being found in Google? I'm gonna start off and really just focus on pages today. Um, if I click on this one here, I'm gonna go about Tim Gentle. So let me just have a look at this page. I wanna just make sure it's the page that's worth optimizing. All right, so it's this one. Tim Gentle, a little background, my life mission. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to optimize this page. I want this page to be found in Google when people are searching for me or for the services that I offer. Quite a hairy chest there. All right, here we go. SEO metadata, can everyone see that? Some people don't even know it's there, but they ask and they go, oh, you know, SEO metadata? I'm like, how did that even show its face? So what I did is I clicked on pages. I opened up a page that traditionally I'm used to editing. All right, I'm used to editing, but we've got this thing here saying SEO metadata. And under there, we've got what's known as a page title, a page description, and you can even hide it. So what I mean is some people might not want to have their site indexed by Google, meaning they don't want it to be found or ranked. And so you can hide it as well to say to the robots, the crawlers, no, nope, stay away from this page. I don't need this indexed. So the page title is one of the tips that I recommend when trying to get your website found. Note here, it says Tim Gentle about Tim. Look, it's that's okay. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're searching for me, that's sort of not a bad page title. But you know, that's like sort of saying design experts about design experts, you know, really it's about web design, app development, augmented reality, you know, graphic design. And so you've got to almost think, you know, are they searching for your business or are they searching for your services? So have a look here, page title. Now watch my mouse, watch my mouse. It comes up here and I'm going to be clicking on this tab, but look where my tab is. Don't know if you can see it. But right up the top of this page, I'll just get rid of this, is known as the page title. It says Tim Gentle about Tim. I can't enlarge that everybody, but just understand that the bots can see that. And when you save your web page into your favorites, it grabs the page title. So I can change that about Tim. You could do something like Tim Gentle, digital strategist. And so, I might be trying to find people out there that are searching for a digital strategist. And then we hear, we've got it here. Tim Gentle, digital strategist, entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. So this is the, um, this here is the metadata and it's known as the metadata description. This is what people see when they bring up your web page after, after Googling it. This is those two lines. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, I'm going to prove this point. I'm just gonna click update. Now let's go and refresh that page. And can you all see here, it says Tim Gentle, digital strategist about Tim. So I've added just a, a little tweak up there to get a few keywords. Now, when you're searching, potentially this might work. If I go Tim Gentle about Tim, I'm just gonna see if this works. I was hoping that it might work. I would have liked to have shown you the page with the metadata um, that we were working on. But anyway, just be known that this line, this, this, all this stuff here, this is your metadata description. In fact, here's one, speaking. So what we can do, we can quickly go into the back of the room and we'll go into pages and we'll go into speaking. And what if we do the 
SEO metadata for this one. Now, I don't know if that was the same. You know, I never read it. Tim Gentle, online marketing strategist presenting workshops on MBN and online marketing. I don't know if that was it. Oh, yeah. Tim Gentle, online marketing strategist presenting workshops on the MBN and online marketing. So, can you see the correlation? Not only can you get keywords in there to help you get ranked, but it's the it's the two sentences that people read. It's the it's the 15, 20 words that people read before they visit your site. So crucially important not only to be ranked, but also to encourage that click through or that conversion. Now when you're SEOing your site, you can go in a bit further, you can do things like keyword links. This is a link. Alright, so you can use a link button here and make some words. All right, you can add in a picture. All right, so if I wanted to add a picture in the bottom here, I can quickly do that now. I'll just add in a random picture for the purpose of the demonstration. Uh, what have I got here? This is me having a cup of tea at the Adobe conference. Insert. So here's a picture of me having a, oh, I would like to set a cup of tea, it looks like Nice big old hot dog or something like that. It looks like a suvalaki of some nature. Either way, I can optimize or I can, uh, I guess, yeah, optimize this image. I can do that by right hand clicking and going to properties. Right hand click and going to properties. And what I can do is I can drop in alternative text. So this is, you know, Tim Gentle munches down on a. Uh, Suvalaki. Now I don't even have to spell that, so whatever, I'm just going to go hamburger. Alright, and so what I'm doing here is obviously just showing you where to put some keywords, but you get the general idea. So when I roll over with my mouse now, it'll show that, um, you know, in the website, it'll come up with that little tag. But the robots eat that as well. They come in and they can eat that in the code. There's so much more we can explore. We're going to be having a workshop purely dedicated to getting ranked in Google. But that's some of the things you can do on your own site right now to optimize it. Metadata descriptions, page titles, keywords in your content and make them keyword links. Whack in some images and put some alt text in place. And probably a nice little one is when you can do what's known as header one tags. This is prime real estate everybody and you can see here I've made it an H1. Header one means important words, means heading one, and Google treats that as priority. Getting keywords in there is really important instead of something like about us or welcome. All right, moving along. We're talking secure zones now, just broad stroke today. Secure zones are on the left here. What are they? Secure zones are a member only part of your website. People need a password to get in to see it. You can keep your mum from seeing your traveling stories. You can keep your whole customers, uh, uh, your retailers not seeing your wholesale prices. I don't mind, whatever you wanna say. You can just have an area on the site that the public can't see. Alrighty, so what I need to demonstrate here is that I've got three secure zones I think from memory they're just a bit of fun, they're not too serious. You can see here that I have got a member only area. So when I click on member only area, I can import subscribers, I can you know, have a landing page on where I want them to land. I can even sell it. All right, so you can have a secure area on your website that people can actually uh, buy membership to, to access. You can import subscribers. So you can have an Excel spreadsheet and you can import them. You can even quick surprise, um, um, quickly, quickly do it. So Jill Smith, and her email is jill at smith.com. Welcome, okay? I can even send you an email to say you're now in my secure zone. But what I'll do is I'll quickly subscribe her and not send Jim, Jill. You get the general drift, all right? Now you can come in here and see them, all right? But what you can do is you can view them, delete them, and work with them. This is a secure zone that I can restrict people access to. 
You need to create a login area on your website. You can create landing pages and you can embed custom fields in those landing pages. For example, pages. I'm gonna pretend that, um, I don't know, Hangout is my landing page for my secure zone. And I could say something like this. Hi, all right, hi. And then I can go in, I can add modules, that little button at the top here, and where are you? CRM, you must be in there, yes. CRM, I'm going to add customers. I'm going to add their first name. Hi, Jill, uh, welcome to our member only area. And so you get the drift. I'm able to pull data out of the database. I'm able to welcome Jill in. She can log in, be welcomed, and she can do a whole lot more behind closed doors. Exciting stuff, secure zones, worth exploring, and we definitely have lots of clients using that. Okay, I'm gonna be moving on now to site settings, and I'm gonna be focusing here on user roles. User roles are almost like a paper has a editor, reporters, photographers, contributors. It's almost like this, this hierarchy and you can create roles. So I might create a role today called marketing. Okay, marketing. And this marketing role, I want to invite particular users. So I'll invite Adam and I'll invite Kylie to be part of this role. And what I can do in that role is I can decrease or increase the privileges they have behind the scenes. I don't want them to, uh, in fact, I'll move everything across first with a double arrow, but I don't want them to delete web pages, so I'm gonna remove that privilege. I don't want them to delete templates. In fact, I don't even want them to touch templates. And so I can decrease and increase um, uh, our privileges. So you might have a contributor, a staff member that you want to be able to help you edit the website, but just pull back on their responsibility, uh, on their um, on their permissions, so they don't uh, yeah, bring down the site. Uh, very, very important too. User roles coming forward. I'll tell you exactly how they fit in as I move down the list. Now we want to talk about email accounts, um, and so you can set up email accounts in the back of your BC website. You can have 10 on your standard setup. Um, so you can have aliases, so you can have Tim and, and Tim G um, at, uh, that would be, I think you can have aliases. I just um, had a bit of a crack at that. Can I have an alias on that? Yes. So here I've got mail at timgentle.com. All right, but if I wanted to, I don't have to set up a whole new account for TG or sales, for example. What I could do is just have mail at Tim Gentle collect email for sales at timgentle.com. So I'll add that. All right, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna do a password recovery. Bit of a tip here, um, don't set it as the same as your, uh, as your email. Um, I always use a Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail, something like that. So you can, if you forget your password, you can access it. Um, that's a real trouble if you've got that set as the same email address. So you can have up to 10. We can upgrade you, of course. You can go up in lots of five and 10, I believe. And uh, yeah, you can handle as many as you want. So you can set up email accounts and it's got it right there. Now, um, categories. Categories, over here, there's a thing called categories. I want you to treat categories like a filing cabinet, a filing cabinet. So when you think of a filing cabinet that has drawers, all right, so what have I got here to work with? I'll just work with towns, that'll do. So towns, when I click on towns, you can see Harrow and Caniva. So that could be um, marketing and that could be online and offline, that could be products and that could be outdoor, indoor. Either way, categories, I use quite religiously throughout the site. Um, what's a good one that I like to use? Yeah, I'll show you. So if I've got modules, modules, 
I'm clicking on modules and I'm going to media download. So what's a media download? It's a PDF document. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It's something that you want people to download. Well, watch this. I've got a digital strategy audit. I'm going to classify this. I'm going to put it in the filing cabinet and I'm going to put it in a category. I click actions. I click classify this media download. And what I'll do is I'm going to move it over to Caniva. All right, so I'm going to classify this media download under Caniva. Close. Now I'm going to go back to my media downloads and I'm going to do the same here with my e-business program. I'm going to classify this under Caniva. And Caniva is reading off the categories that we set up earlier. Close. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a page the PDFs that have been classified by a particular category. Watch closely. Site Manager, Pages. I'm going to choose a page. In this case, I'll do that BC Demo. I wonder if I can find that. Actually, I saw that before. Recent items, no. I'll just do About Tim. And I'm going to, no, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do Hangout. No, Speaker. Sorry, speaker, that'll do. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be bringing in an example. So this is um, view our menus. I'm giving you an example. This could be that you want to uh, display all the menus for your restaurant. Um, you want to display whatever. I'm going to click on add modules. And then on the right here, I'm going to provide media downloads that have been classified under Caniva. And you can see here, it's automatically pulled them out of the system. It said, all right, show me the ones. I'm just going to click insert. And it's put this tiny little bit of code on my website. Let me just click update. And let me go to the website and click refresh. Now, speaker, wasn't it? Speaking. So if you have a little look here, this is one of my pages and I have created a category. I've assigned some of my media downloads to that category in brackets classification. And then I've uh, I guess grabbed a feed. I've um, I've gone in and added some code which punches out media downloads that have been classified under Caniva. And if I want to now, I don't have to touch that again. Just say I add a new one. Let's do that. So I'll come in here and I'll go. Where are you? File manager. Yep. I've just got a new menu. I've just got a new download. I've just got a new application form, I don't know, whatever. So I'll click on, where is media downloads when I need it? Modules, media downloads, the Queensland Digital Economy Week. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to classify that. So all I've done is I've added a new media download and I've classified it. Now what happens is when I go back to this page and click refresh, bang. So once you've got the code in place, it's just a matter of adding your media downloads and classifying them using categories. I love categories. All right, workflows. What are workflows? All right, workflows are really handy. Let's just say that I've filled out a form, subscribed to a newsletter, bought from the shop, uh, subscribe, you know, done anything that sort of I submit a button. Under site settings, there's a thing called manage workflows. Now earlier I talked about user roles. Watch where they come in in a minute. So let's just say that I've got a form on my site that says fill out this form and it's your contact us form. All right, so let's just say we've assigned a form, the contact us form, Let's even do that, it's worth knowing. 
modules, site manager, web forms. So you might have a web form on your site. Okay, book Tim today or contact us form, that'll do. And when someone fills out this form, first name, last name, hey, give me a call, I'm really interested, you can assign a workflow. I've just clicked edit properties there and you'll see here, use workflow. It's going to be using this workflow. But I can have other workflows. I can create workflows and if someone is spare parts and someone is sales or you want Queensland to go here and Victoria to go there, either way you can trigger workflows after someone's filled out a web form. So now that you know that, just jump down here with me into manage workflows and you can see here I have a customer inquiry workflow. And I can add steps. I can even assign it to orders if I want to, so when someone places an order. Now if I click add steps to workflow, you'll notice one thing here. I can send an SMS. Seriously? I bet you didn't even know that. So this actually sends an SMS to you while you're on your tractor and you know that someone wants to buy some of your organic lamb. But also you can be notified via email. So it can also email you to say, hey, someone's made an inquiry. You need to top up your SMSs if you're keen on that, but it does have that. But have a look here. Not only can I be notified via email, but I can notify different roles. So I can notify the design experts, the marketing department, and those user roles. I mustn't have um, pushed save before. But if instead of notifying administrators, I could notify marketing. And so from that point onwards, anyone that's been assigned to the marketing role would receive an email notification. You can also send a notification to another email address. So if you wanted to send it to a private one, a big pond, you can also do that. All right. So there's lots of different things. You can also send a workflow message to the customers. Hey, thanks a million. Um, blah, blah and you get the general idea. They'll also get an autoresponder, um, so you know, just be careful of that step. Just give it a double check before you want to choose that one as well. So you can come in here and set up different workflows. Geez, it can go deeper than that. Just understand SMSs and email is the first step, but it can also trigger some cases and, uh, and, uh, and also some workflows behind the scenes as well to help you manage support calls, servicing tickets, um, uh, you know, supply desk, lots of things like that. Okay, so we've got the BC community, everyone. What do I mean by that business catalyst community? You know, we are a business catalyst master partner, one of the top 10 in the world. I'm very proud of that. But at the end of the day, you can also be part of the community. You own a business catalyst website if you've got one. Or those people that are thinking of coming across and giving it a try, great. Here we are. Um, you've got Business Catalyst themselves. Okay, so you know you can go to Business Catalyst, the website, and you can learn a bit more. So business catalyst.com. Alright, so let me just bring that up. And so Business Catalyst has a website. You can go on and learn a little bit more about the product. Sometimes I'm even on the home page. Drum roll, people. Drum roll. Come on. No. Refresh. How dare they. Refresh. I know you're coming up. There's about 10 of us that appear on the home page. All right. Drum roll, people. Come on. No. What's wrong with them today? Don't they like me anymore? There I am. God. So as you can see, Design Experts appears randomly on the, uh, uh, on the Business Catalyst website. Uh, we've had a lot of success working as one of their premium partners. And there's Brent and Brett. And so I'm very, um, uh, yeah, very familiar with them and, uh, and deal with them from time to time as well. So good to see them also sharing the success in Business Catalyst. All right, what else have we got? Um, we've got also, social media. 
okay? So social media. So you can have a look. BC's got a Twitter account. There's two of them. One's a bit techie. We follow that for the technical alerts. There's also another BC one uh, for more marketing sort of stuff. Uh, they've also got a really good LinkedIn page. It's known as the Business Catalyst Cafe. Um, so if you're interested in getting involved there, check out LinkedIn. And they've also got some really good um, Adobe TV or a YouTube channel in one respect, but they've got a great TV sh um, um, sort of broadcast. They kind of do vodcasts and bits and pieces. So I think probably their social media isn't as strong as it could be. Uh, they really are focused on dealing with agencies like ourselves. They're not really sort of, you know, as a customer, like if you're a plumber and you've got a BC site, they don't sort of deal with you as much as they would deal with an agency. So in one respect, they're a supplier to the wholesaler, not necessarily the retailer, you being the retailer. But just letting you know, there's a little bit around social media, in particular LinkedIn. Look, BC Sandpile, again, it's a little bit more technical and more directed at agencies, but for some of those people that really do like to roll up their sleeves, you may be able to get involved in BC Sandpile. Check that out. There's a weekly uh, podcast uh, that they do, which is um, really cool. The other thing I like is the BC App Store. You can buy plugins now. They're opening the doors and allowing plugins. So we've also got the BC App Store up on the market, and Design Experts has submitted a few apps to the store for other people to use. So um, the BC community is pretty cool and I want you to be involved if you feel like you need to. If not, you can just give us a call and we can be your representative. All right, BC training, don't forget we do have a customer care center. If you haven't got access to that and you're with design experts, do get access. There's some goodies in there, including some great training resources. We do do our webinars, okay? We're doing lots of webinars. And I'm going to invite Erin in a moment to sort of walk you through the next stage of our webinars as we conclude the masterclass. But I'll just work through other options for BC training. We do one-on-one -on -one training, so you can get some one-on-one -on -one tuition, uh, and that can be recorded for future use. You can email studio at designexperts.com.au to get some training and to book a time, or you can give us a call on one 85 25 82 now if you need support we ask you that you submit a support ticket on design experts website top right is a button you just click it and you fill out the web form and you'll be allocated a ticket this will join the taxi rank so to speak and it's a great way to work with our team for more urgent calls by all means you can email support at designexperts.com.au that's exactly the same people as going through the uh, support ticketing system. In fact, it's not as good. And you can give us a call as well. We're not gonna sort of hang up the phone. But by lodging a support ticket, our developers and support team need to lodge time against each ticket so we can monitor each account. All right, Tim's tip. What am I thinking? Where am I going? Well, I'm gonna be suggesting to set up some workflows. Dig a bit deeper in that, people. Think about it. You might have a contact form. You might have a request to quote. You might even have a wholesale inquiry. Now, they've all got autoresponders and they also trigger workflows. So think about who you want that workflow to go to. Will that increase efficiencies in your business? You can always be CC'd in on those early stages. So don't get too stressed, but just experiment with workflows. Set up autoresponders. These things land in the in the email, in the inbox, of someone who fills out one of your web forms. So using the generic, hey, thanks for your inquiry, we'll get back to you soon, I think is default. What do you really want that to say? Do you want them to download a menu, watch a YouTube video, like you on Facebook, give you a call? You know, the autoresponder in web forms is crucial. So have a little think about that. Now you can contact your account manager to set these things up. You can give us the text, we can make it look pretty, we can put your logo, we can wrap it around in a beautiful template, you know, depending on how far you wanna take this. But just letting you know, contact your account manager here at DE by giving us a call on 1300 85 25 82 and we can walk you through making your website perform a bit better. 
So we really love your feedback, and I noticed that a couple of you did it last week. Thank you. You know, um, I, I'm going to keep asking this because if I don't, you know, sometimes we all get too busy and we don't do it. Those that have joined me in more than one, jump onto our Facebook. Look, I'm going to do it because it's so easy. All you've got to do is go to facebook.com slash design experts. In fact, why don't you do it right now? You can have me beaming through your ear on one end, and then you can actually be doing this as you're, uh, you know, as you're, uh, as you're listening to the webinar. And see here, this says reviews. So I've gone to facebook.com slash design experts, and I've clicked on reviews. And then a couple of you have filled this out. In fact, I see someone's just jumped on now. Thank you. Go on, I dare you. While you're listening to this, do it right now. Let us know what you think of the BC Masterclass and let us know this one other thing. How can we help you in the future? What other topics do you want? And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to conclude the webinar. I'm going to hand the reins over to Erin. I'll just make sure I finish my slides, Erin. I'll push stop on the recording. I'll get you to facilitate the feedback talk about the next steps with our future webinars, and we'll wrap it up. So just let me um, do that last little bit here. Apologies for the delay. So jump onto facebook.com slash design experts. Please give us some feedback, and um, we would love that. You can email studio. Some of you have done that. That's been interesting to hear, and I've really enjoyed that. And uh, by all means, give us a call and say, hey, this webinar series was wicked. It went too long. It needs to be more detailed. I want this topic, blah, blah, blah. We'd love to know. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Um, what I'll do, Erin, is I will leave this screen up on the, so everyone can see it. And uh, that's it from the captain in the, the lounge today. Thank you everybody for diving in a lot deeper than some of the previous webinars. Uh, for those joining us on Meerkat, I hope you appreciated uh, the first live broadcast via our Twitter stream. I saw we had a few visiting us. I'm sure it wasn't as good as being in the webinar with my iPhone filming the screen, but we'll work on that. You've got to explore, you've got to navigate, and you've got to take advantage of the digital world. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to think digital. I'm Tim Gentle, and it's over and out from the Captain's Lounge. Cheers. Cheers.